There are losses too great for words, and this is one of them. When Carlton asked me to speak for Audrey, there was no way I could say no. I have known Audrey Dean for all of my life. I knew her well before she was a right. She was one of my father's piano pupils. She came to the little house in Shirley, where I mastered the art of reading and my brother learned to walk where the grand piano dominated the front room and the piano pupils came and went, making that piano sing. But truth be told, I wanted to say no to this task. I'm a writer. This is the gift I've been given, to spin thoughts and feelings and images into words and make them sing. But as God is my witness, I had no words for this. When I first met Audrey, she couldn't have been more than 16 years old plump and pretty and always, it seemed, always smiling. And I loved her from then. She was part of the fabric of my childhood, which was a fabric, which was a childhood filled with music and laughter. She had 14 years on me, and as I grew, she grew too, as my father's star pupil. From the piano lessons in Shirley, we moved to the house in Johnson Road, where my father continued to teach piano, First in the alcove, it may have been a breakfast room, and then in his studio. Audrey was the pianist he trusted to accompany performers and choirs so that he could be free to conduct, and this is how I remember her best. Sitting at the grand piano in our living room while my father conducted the singers in rehearsal. She was the one he trusted to play. And it is fitting that after he died, she is the one who got that teaching piano. And this is the childhood that I knew. Every September, our home became a rehearsal hall. On Thursdays, my mother would set out an urn for coffee in our back porch, and my father would push our furniture against the walls and fill our front room and dining room with folding metal chairs, and the choir would come and rehearse. My father would conduct, and Audrey would play the grand piano, sitting leaning over the music under the light. Later, I learned she could sing too. And she wrote and arranged and conducted as well. As my brother and I grew up, she went off to school, got married, had her children, and moved into the world and through my life, all our lives, in a different fashion, taking the music that was in her into the world in countless other ways. She founded and conducted choirs. She taught thousands of Bahamians the principles of music. She gave concerts. She wrote and arranged scores and scores of pieces. God had put deep wells of talent in her, and she poured those out by the day, by the month, by the year. Music was the first one, but she was a wordsmith too, writing stories and poems and plays. And she was a designer, always finding ways to make her home beautiful, to make the world around her more and more beautiful. A hostess extraordinaire, the kind of person who, when you entered her home, made you feel as though you would always be welcome. Hers was a house you didn't want to leave. As I grew up and became a woman, Audrey was always there, at the edges of my existence. She was at COB when I hung out there, waiting for my mother to finish work. I might wait in the principal's office, but more often, I might wait in the H block, with Pauline and Audrey and Barbara, who were mothers to every single music student who passed through their hands. Back in those days, while there were single offices upstairs, there was also one big room where people could sit and be counseled and instructed and serve cups of tea and coffee and learn not only music from the three music professors. If you sat there long enough, you would learn about life. You would learn about love. You would learn how to make the right decisions in tough situations, and you would be guided through them by these women who were far, far more than teachers to the people who came through their hands. It was a kind of space that is missing from many of our institutions today, the kind of space where generations could sit together and learn informally from one another, where they could meet as people, where mentoring could take place. And Audrey excelled at that kind of mentoring. She would correct you and guide you so that you would not forget the lessons, but also